creator of Earthship Iron Bank. So Martin, he designs Earthships for Earthship Eco Homes and teaches sustainable design at the University of South Australia. His PhD involved life cycle assessment and energy modeling of passive solar design homes to better understand what design features are suitable for sustainable homes in Australia. So aside from creating in Australia first here, um, he's also bringing that into the, into the academic world um, with all this testing. So we really Really appreciate Martin being here with us today to talk about his uh, passion project. Here you go. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Martin Freeney, and uh, yeah, this is Earthship Iron Bank, Australia's first council approved Earthship. Uh, it's going to be a bed and breakfast opening soon, almost finished. It's only been seven years in the making. Uh, and also be sort of multi-purpose teaching space for permaculture courses, earthship courses, and a yoga studio. So this presentation is going to just sort of cover some of the unusual earthship building processes and design features. Uh, this is a little floor plan. Uh, you can see uh, on the left an entry where all the um, batteries and uh, uh, inverters and things are. It's it's off the grid, so um, hence the batteries. There's a greenhouse uh, with the planter in the front, uh, bathroom at the end of the greenhouse, and the everything room, which is uh, bed, kitchenette, um, dining room kind of thing. So it's just a little earthship. Uh, one of the unusual things about the construction of this building is that it's been built mainly with volunteers who, frankly, haven't got a clue about how to uh, build something, but one of the great things about uh, uh, Earthships is that the construction techniques are very simple and quick to learn. Uh, so here you see volunteers enjoying uh, lunch <coughs> up near the straw bale house. Uh, here you see volunteers dressed in drag. <laughs> uh, here you see us kicking back enjoying a uh, campfire at the end of a hard day's tyre pounding. Uh, which brings me to the tyre walls, building with waste and earth. So this is Michael Reynolds, the, the Earthship guru um, from America, an architect who uh, decided he was going to do something with this waste material. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, we started just sort of quite randomly actually without any council approval. <laughs> Got Mike up one day, we just started pounding tyres with 25 um, UniSA students. Uh, and uh, that kind of continued on and on for many years actually. Uh, it's a, quite a labour-intensive process. Um, but my mate Sam, who's in the middle there and in the crowd tonight, he started a company called Earth and Tire. They use pneumatic rammers to pound the earth into the tyres. That makes it a lot quicker and uh, actually more reliable. The walls don't settle as much and that kind of thing. Um, here you see a tyre wall with some formwork on the top. Um, you put a concrete beam on the top of the tyre wall to make it super strong. Um, to resist the forces of the earth behind it because it all gets backfilled, providing thermal mass and stable indoor temperatures. Uh, that's a rendered tyre wall there um, with a little uh, uh, ferro cement vault in the back that's insulated with hempcrete, in fact. So it's quite an experimental building trying all sorts of weird and wonderful things. And um, this, of course, is, is why we're building with tyres because they're a diabolical kind of waste um, product of our in industrial society. Um, we could actually build about 40,000 earth ships a year in Australia alone with all the waste tyres. I think that's about half the homes we build each year in Australia, roughly. Um, uh, so yeah, ferro cement vaults and green roof, which is a quite a bushfire proof roof. We are in a really high bushfire uh, danger area in the Adelaide Hills. Um, here you see uh, volunteers uh, tying mouse wire onto the rebar 
uh, frame, which we call the birdcage. And there you see the birdcage actually on the tire wall and all the rebar prepped for a concrete pour for that bond beam. Uh, here you see us propping that, um, that birdcage, getting the right shape to the vault. That shape is inherently very strong. Uh, so you don't actually need a lot of uh, concrete up there to um, resist the forces of the, the earth roof that we've put on top. That's the first spit coat, we call it. Just a cement mortar that goes onto the mouse wire. All propped quite heavily. Finishing coat of uh, the cement render. And here we've um, actually topped that vault with about 15 tonnes of earth uh, to make it flat. And here we're putting some polystyrene insulation on. Everyone was writing their, uh, you know, good wishes, whatever on there, drawing alien heads and things. Um, and here we're celebrating the, the, um, the finish of building that roof. We topped it with gravel uh, and that's, that was a photo taken today. And uh, yeah, that acts as a really good filter for rainwater and as I said previously, really bushfire resistant. Um, and that little box at the back is where all the water drains into, just feeding rainwater tanks. It's sort of off-grid with water as well as energy. Uh, another unusual thing about it is the bath. Um, this is Claire building the bath. Uh, you can see there in her hand she's got more building materials. <laughs> and uh, basically cement mortar, cans, and here, sort of years later, um, more, uh, more wonderful volunteers are uh, putting Tadalact on the bath. Tadalact is an ancient Moroccan waterproof finish, uh, which is sort of an alternative to tiling. So that's what's happening there. That's the finished bath. Um, earth floors. Uh, here you see uh, the, the gravel subfloor for the earth floor. Um, earth floors are probably the most sustainable floor you can do, probably. Um, and that, that gravel stops water from sort of wicking up into your floor. And there you see road base on top of the gravel, and then the, um, the adobe or cob um, earth, sand and straw mixture, or clay, sand and straw. And here, this is not a spill, this is um, putting some uh, linseed oil uh, on, the, on the floor to seal it, waterproof it. Uh, the bottle walls, they're kind of just for fun. Um, here you can see uh, planning out a pattern for a, a bottle wall. It's basically two bottles with the necks chopped off and sticky taped together to make a little a brick module. And uh, there's, the, there's the bathtub and the shower. Bottle wall by night. The greenhouse, some framing. Some Sam testing the planter, the grey water planter. Bananas or bananas, and this is the valve that I actually had to remove um, because SA Health didn't like me using grey water inside. Batteries, inverters, and the earth tubes which bring in sort of um, passive air conditioning year round, and I'm running out of time, <laughs> but that's the, uh, that's the earth tube cupboard, there are the earth tubes inside, and there's some of my great graphs showing how wonderfully it's performing. That's it. <laughs> <laughs>